Hi everyone, and uh, I'm Dr. Simon Hull. Uh, welcome to uh, Geomatics. I'm uh, the senior lecturer and program convener for the Division of Geomatics, which is part of the School of Architecture, Planning and Geomatics. I'm being assisted in this with uh, Janine Mayer, who's our departmental administrator, and she's going to be fielding uh, questions in the Q&A. So while I'm talking, it'll be really helpful if you just pop some questions into the Q&A and uh, we'll have lots of time at the end to deal with any questions that you might have. Um, so I'm just going to take you through a, a few slides which will explain what geomatics is and what the kinds of things are that you'll be doing uh, in the course of the degree and what some of the employment prospects are for you. So thanks very much for making the time to be here and um, I look forward to engaging with you in the Q&A at the end. So geomatics is about the measurement, analysis, management, uh, modeling and communication of spatial data. Uh, that's all the, 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 the things that you'll be learning along the way. Those are the focus areas in the degree. We call it an applied science and a professional discipline. Uh, an applied science because a student of geomatics is involved in spatial science. Uh, spatial science being that measurement, analysis, management, modeling and communication of spatial data. It's also a professional discipline uh, because the degree is endorsed by the South African Geomatics Council for various registration categories in a profession that engages in a wide range of disciplines, including engineering, uh, environmental sciences, land administration and law, to name a few. Uh, and something that you'll pick up as I go through the slides is that it is a, a, a really a, um, a broad based degree uh, with application in multiple different areas. Uh, you really do learn a lot of knowledge and skills uh, that can be applied in a wide range of, uh, uh, or be used in a wide range of applications. Uh, so it's really quite exciting from that perspective. Uh, the name geomatics, you might be wondering what on earth is that? So the profession has undergone some name changes over the years. I studied an undergrad in surveying and mapping back in the 90s. And around that time, there was an international move that started in Canada to rebrand the profession as geomatics. And that was to recognize uh, the more integrated and cross-disciplinary influences that have been shaping the profession, such as uh, what was really uh, influential at that time was satellite positioning technologies such as GPS. Uh, and we now refer to them as global navigation satellite systems because GPS is only one of a host of different uh, satellite surveying technologies out there. Uh, we also had coming into the scene quite strongly was information systems infrastructures such as geographic information systems. And so the traditional idea of the surveyor uh, gave way to this notion of the geomatician who is someone who has a, a feeler in, in much more broad based applications than just uh, looking through a total station, uh, the kind of idea you might see guys at the side of the road with uh, a level or a total station or, or, or something like that. Uh, we are, UCT adopted the name Geomatics in the early 2000s uh, and we are now 2020 and beyond, we, we thinking, we're not there yet, but we are talking about rebranding yet again to something I personally like the name spatial science uh, to recognize more modern influences and the opportunities that are being presented these days. Uh, whatever we call it, our history dates back to the Egyptians and the Babylonians, uh, but that doesn't mean that it's outdated. In this degree, you'll learn a wide range of skills and knowledge using state of the art instruments and software to address uh, many modern challenges such as uh, big data management and dare I say it, the fourth industrial revolution. I'm sure you've heard that already today. Uh, spatial data science, uh, land reform is something that we address uh, in, in my own personal research. I address land reform quite a lot. Uh, so it's not just about numbers and, uh, and, and pegs in the ground and maps. Uh, we deal with the social impact of the things that we learn as well. 
uh, such as spatial inequality. And then there's the modern challenges like climate change and urbanization, uh, population growth, uh, vegetation depletion, uh, you know, sea level rise, whatever. If it has to do with land, if it has to do with the earth and the spaces around us, then those are the kinds of things that uh, we uh, will be applying our skills to. So that means that uh, if, if, if we look at the measurement, modeling and management side of spatial data or spatial sciences, that means that you're going to get hands on experience to actually measure stuff. Uh, using equipment ranging from ordinary tape measures to laser scanners, drones, satellites. Uh, you learn how to operate equipment to get the best possible measurements. Uh, you will also learn that no measurement is error free and you learn how to handle that reality. You will learn skills related to understanding errors and how to handle the effects of measurement errors to get the best solution. Uh, so that, uh, and this comes back to us being a professional discipline, you will be able to say to someone that, for example, uh, an area is, let's say, 12 hectares, and you put your signature on that and people believe you because you will be the best qualified person to make that statement. Uh, if somebody needs to put an oil rig at a particular location in the middle of the ocean, they'll call you because you'll be the best qualified person to say that it is in the right position. Uh, so th th those are uh, understanding errors and understanding measurements, errors and, and, and measurement limitations is a really fundamental part of our degree uh, because if it has to be right, you need to make sure that you've got the right person with the right skills and the right understanding to be there. You'll also learn how to manage your data. We collect a lot of data uh, in a typical survey, such as in, in the images. There you'll collect over 100, maybe 200, 400 points uh, using normal land surveying technologies. These are students on the annual survey camp that we go away every year. Um, but when you start collecting data using laser scanners and, and drones and, and uh, aerial photography, then the number of data points jumps up into the tens and hundreds of thousands. Big data management is very important for us. Uh, you'll also learn, so you learn how to manage the data and how to create models and how to create meaning from the data. Uh, by models, I mean two things. Uh, a model can be a simplification of reality in the form of taking, uh, if you look at the, the picture at, at the top, you've got uh, quite a hilly terrain there, and we'll represent that on a 2D surface. I'll show you in the next slide, actually, that exact uh, piece of ground that uh, they produced a map of. So we take the complex reality and simplify it into two dimensional maps, uh, or it could be a three dimensional virtual model. Uh, modeling also means forecasting, uh, so trying to predict what could happen next. So, for example, what would happen if the sea level rose by one meter? Or how fast is this vegetation in a certain area diminishing? Or what's going to happen if uh, the population of this urban area grows over the next, you know, whatever, 10 years or something? So the forecasting is one form of modeling and simplification is the other form of modeling. We're taking a lot of data and we are producing two different kinds of models from that. There's that map that I mentioned of that area. Uh, so that's a group of second year students produced a map like that. So remember, it's a four year degree. Um, and so in second year, you'll be doing surveys and producing maps, and it gets obviously more complicated as the years go. You learn to make sense of the data to answer relevant questions. I have a master's student at the moment looking at uh, the best locations for wind, solar and uh, hydro power sources in Zimbabwe. Um, so finding the best location for something is a very common question uh, using geographic information systems. Uh, we teach you how to communicate your findings predominantly using maps but also with graphs, charts, tables, and reports. Report writing uh, is a big part of the, the what you, you need to learn as well, uh, and often a challenge for our students. I'm going to take you through the next couple of slides, which just show, I've called it branches of geomatics, not really branches of geomatics, it's just the kinds of things that you might be engaged in. Uh, on this slide, 
I've got a screen grab of Google Earth Engine, just a very simple routine. So you can see at the top there's some coding. Uh, I think that is, oh, let me get it right now. I think that's Java um, uh, script. So you will be learning, uh, you actually learn some Python programming skills uh, throughout the degree. Um, that in Python and Java, much of a muchness really. Uh, Google Earth Engine uses uh, Java and I think they use Python as well, but anyway. So what in this image, we've got an aerial photo from Landsat, which is a satellite, a series of satellites that have been orbiting the Earth since the 70s. Um, and we've got an aerial uh, image from the Landsat satellite that's over half of Eswatini in the north of KZN, the southeast of Mpumalanga. Um, and you can see the colors are all wrong because uh, we've done some analysis on the image. Uh, this image, if you know what the colors mean, is going to show you where plants are healthy and where they are unhealthy. It's called a normalized difference of vegetation index. I use this image just to highlight some of the things that you're going to learn. Some coding you're going to learn uh, when we take images with satellites, we call it remote sensing. Uh, you can apply that into a geographic information system environment uh, to analyze and maybe you'll get, because the Landsat satellites, for example, have been orbiting the Earth for so many years, you can get a time series to see what uh, plants are getting worse, which plants are getting better. You can look at the water bodies, are they diminishing, are they increasing, and, and that kind of analysis to go there. So that's the remote sensing and the geographic information systems side of the degree. Uh, here we've got a couple of 3D models. Uh, so these are not photos and they're not pictures. They are actual three-dimensional models of a castle in Ghana that a team went using a laser scanner and, uh, and photography, uh, even using, using drones as well as uh, ground-based uh, photographs uh, they've produced a 3D model. I, I, you could even go onto the website and, and find the links to see uh, and actually you know, explore the model uh, in three dimensions and rotate it and go in and out and so on. Um, so that's a, an example of modeling, a 3D model. You're taking a, a, a real castle, you're simplifying it into a virtual environment, but capturing the most minute details. There'll be hundreds of thousands, if not millions of points uh, making up that model, which has now been textured and surfaces have been applied so that it looks like the real thing. So that in case the real thing ever gets demolished, you know, nothing lasts forever, but you will have a, a digital representation of it to remember it by. And archaeologists can use this and architects can use this uh, in their further analyses. Here's some examples of hydrographic surveying, which is another branch of geomatics. But let me not overstate myself here, you will learn about hydrographic surveying, but uh, don't get excited and think you're going to go racing over giant waves in the course of the degree. We don't have, unfortunately, any uh, of the, the hydro equipment here. So you'll learn the principles. Uh, it's not to say that you can't do it. My first job was doing some uh, seafloor mapping uh, as well, not as a hydrographic surveyor, but as a marine surveyor out at sea. Uh, so you can take what you learn in this degree and take it into a variety of places. I've traveled all over the world doing a mapping of the seafloor. It's very exciting. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Unfortunately, that image on the right, I still get a little bit queasy just looking at that seasickness eventually made me uh, return to land and more normal surveying. Here we've got some students uh, who are using drones uh, at the Hamilton Rugby, Rugby Club here in Greenpoint. They were uh, producing a map of that of that whole um, sports field area uh, just to show you that, that we do, you know, we, we mentioned using drones and laser scanners. We do actually have drones and we do actually uh, use them. Uh, the students use them to produce maps. And, and so, yeah, we, we really want you to be exposed to lots of the most cutting edge technologies. I could show more pictures. Unfortunately, I sort of ran out of time in putting this all together, but we do have examples of, of students using laser scanners on campus. Uh, you're not gonna you know, go to Ghana and, and, and survey a castle. Let me also not overstate that uh, quickly <laughs> before anyone thinks that we got field trips to neighboring countries. Uh, we'll, we keep most of our stuff here in the Western Cape, but if you are looking at postgraduate studies with us, then there, there could be opportunities for that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that's uh, 
just to show you some of the breadth of the degree, uh, you'll see we touch on a lot of different areas. Uh, because you've already applied, you should be aware of these entrance requirements. Um, just to mention that uh, don't don't underestimate the importance of maths. Uh, that's probably one of the the, the the hurdles for our students to overcome. Uh, science is also uh, very important in the degree, um, and, and and yeah, uh, those entrance requirements you should be familiar with. That idiot in the top left of the picture is photo bombing. That's 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 yours truly. Um, and employment prospects. So what could you do with the degree? There are a number of things. I only got four up here, but really it, you can you can take the degree and use it in a variety of ways. I sort of I follow um, some of our students on LinkedIn to see what they're doing, and I'm always amazed at the kinds of uh, careers that they create with our degree. So I'll start with the obvious. Our degree, as I mentioned, is endorsed by the South African Geomatics Council. Uh, we have two streams in the degree. There's a surveying stream and a geoinformatics stream, uh, and those are, are a kind of career path that you can take uh, as a as a professional. Uh, so you could become your uh, a land a professional land surveyor and own your small business, uh, or you could become a professional geoinformatics practitioner and go into the GIS and spatial information industry. Um, and that is really what the degree was created for, if I can put it that way. Uh, and that's what it's what it's built. So that's the foundation. Let me put it that way. That's the foundation of our degree. Uh, and uh, most of our students, I think, would would end up as either in a, in a land surveying firm or in the GIS and spatial information industry. A lot of students work in um, government or in municipalities. Uh, we've got people in the Department of Housing and in the city of Cape Town um, and, and in uh, local and national government. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of uh, opportunities there. Uh, but we also get international project contractors, consultants. I mentioned hydrographic surveyors. I like to make the example. One of our students ended up working for pick and pay. And you might think mm, you're not going to end up as a, as a as a cashier or um, or you're not going to use your degree in something like that. But what he was actually doing for pick and pay was he was using his degree uh, and his geographic information knowledge to help them find the best location for the next pick and pay. So looking at where are all the spas, where is the checkers, where is the shop right, where is the woolies, you know, where do people live, where are the access routes, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and crunching all of that information together and to find uh, the best location for the next pick and pay outlets. Um, so that's something that, you know, I wouldn't have imagined that somebody would be using the degree for. Others have gone on to start all sorts of other businesses. Uh, we've got data consultants. Um, yeah, a wide, a wide range, uh, really. So I think that's the end of my presentation. I really want to uh, allow time for, for questions. If anybody has any questions, um, I'm very happy to answer them. So I think over to you, Janine. I'll carry on talking then until a question pops up. Um, I mentioned it's a four year degree um, and we have these two streams. So it's kind of three streams really. So there's the geoinformatics stream and the surveying stream. Um, in the geoinformatics stream, there are two specializations that you can currently do. One is an environmental and geographical science specialization and the other one's a computer science specialization. Uh, a number of students uh, in first year are a little bit panicky about, you know, they don't know what stream to do, and we'll really guide you through that. The big choice only needs to be really be made at the end of second year. There are some implications in first year, uh, but we'll guide you through that. Um, and really, the uh, the surveying stream currently is endorsed by the, the South African Geomatics Council for work as a professional land surveyor and as a professional geoinformatics practitioner. So you come out with both, whereas the geoinformatics stream is only endorsed as a professional geoinformatics practitioner. So what that means is you can't do land surveying if you do the geoinformatics stream. But if you do the surveying stream, then you can do land surveying and GIS, to put it simply. What you gain in the geoinformatics stream is the specialization, either in environmental and geographical sciences or in computer sciences. 
computer science stream is very hard. I'm not going to lie, but it does open up so many opportunities. Uh, and those are the guys that we see using their degrees in, in really creative and, and imaginative ways. Um, so it, it, it is a very exciting prospect. The, the environmental and geographical sciences stream is also uh, you learn you, you, you basically you almost come out with uh, not quite you, you, don't, you can't get a double degree, but you almost come out with an EGS degree and a survey, a, a geomatics degree or a computer science degree and a geomatics degree at the end of that. Um, something else I can tell you that I should have mentioned uh, and, and you saw that little slide where I was photobombing and, uh, and the students that I was with there uh, and, and, and the, the small number of students is something that, that we like a lot. Uh, our class sizes are small um, and that means we get to know the students quite well. We get to know them on a first name basis uh, and we get one on one interactions with them. Um, and and that means that you're not lost in a massive crowd of of people. You we uh, our, our offices are, are always or well, just about always open. You can come and knock on the door if you've got a question with an assignment or you didn't understand something in a lecture. Uh, we're there and, and and we because because you don't have massive classes. We typically get around between 30 and 40 first year students. Um, not everybody hangs around for the duration of the degree, so maybe in final year you might be sitting in a class of 20. Um, and so it's nice and small. You get to know your your the, the people in your cohort. Uh, people make really lasting friendships in the degree. Um, and so it's, it, it, I really enjoy It's one of the things I've always enjoyed about a degree in geomatics is that it is quite small. Uh, it is quite intimate. Uh, you're not lost in a massive crowd. Uh, the other thing that's very nice about the degree obviously is, uh, and as you will have seen in the images that I showed, uh, it's very hands on and we spend a fair amount of time outdoors collecting data. You're not stuck in the lecture theatre from eight in the morning till five in the evening. Uh, there's a significant portion of that uh, on a weekly basis that you'll be outside using instruments, collecting data. You might be in a computer lab, uh, you know, analyzing the data, doing assignments and so on. Uh, it's very hands on. It's not just, uh, you know, lecture, 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 theory, theory, theory. Uh, we really do expect you to go out and collect your own data and analyze it and reduce it and produce your own maps. Um, so it's very hands on and uh, we, we'd like to try and keep it quite diverse. See, Naran is saying that there is a oh, question. There we go. OK, ah, uh, there's a question from, yeah, Tim Binkorsi. Uh, give me a lot of credit for someone not. with a diploma. Uh, yes, Tim and Corsi, there is a, a, a rule book uh, we call the we call the Green Book. Um, it's a it's the faculty handbook, and there are rules in there. I don't know it off the top of my head, which is why I'm saying that. Uh, but if you send me an email, then I can certainly help you out. So, uh, unfortunately, if you come in with a diploma, there's no um, there's no blanket concession. Uh, everything is handled on a course by course basis. Uh, and so it, it depends which uh, institution you got your diploma from and how long ago. Uh, it also often depends on the results that you have. Uh, and it's we, we, I need to send your transcript to the math department. Uh, I need to send it to the physics department and the computer science department and the communication studies department, etc. To see if they would be happy to endorse uh, or to to give you credits for what you've done. Um, so it, it, it needs to be done on a student by student basis. There's no blanket concession, but there is something there is a limit uh in the rule book and maybe janine uh, knows the limits off the top of your head put you on the spot janine sorry um so any uct qualification requires students to complete at least two thirds of the degree in order to be awarded the qualification so yeah that that would be that would be the answer Thanks, Janine. 
typically students who come in with a diploma uh, will spend three years with us still. Uh, it's uh, because you don't always get accreditation for a complete course. So you might need to repeat parts of a course uh, or a full course in some of it you've already studied. And also timetabling doesn't always allow it that you can finish in, in for example, two years. Timetabling is often one of the constraints uh, to getting through faster. So typically I haven't actually seen anyone coming in with, with a diploma who's finished in less than three years with us. Um, so just to bear that in mind as well. I'll mention while we're waiting for more questions, uh, I did touch on, uh, I mentioned our postgrad program. So we do uh, offer masters and uh, PhD as well, uh, all by research. Uh, so we don't at the moment have any coursework masters, something I'm toying with in the back of my head, but unfortunately it's probably a few years away from being a reality. But we have masters by research and PhD by research, which means that you come in, you work with a supervisor, uh, for about 18 months, uh, maybe two years, maybe more, uh, but typically you want to get it done in 18 months to two years and you produce your own dissertation or, or thesis. Uh, you're your own boss uh, with your supervisor. Uh, there's no lectures that you have to attend, so it's really you are working on a project solidly uh, for those 18 months uh, to two years or more. If it's master's and if it's PhD, it should be two to four or six or I took seven years to finish mine. Um, and but that's when you're working at the same time, it's quite difficult. Uh, and that's really exciting because there we get to touch on, you know, real hands on applications of all of the things that you've learned at this broad degree. You can focus in on a specific aspect, a specific problem um, and really apply what you've learned and 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 grow in your own education from that. You know, you learn so many things uh, during a postgraduate studies, um, and so it's yeah, it's really if if you if you have the time and you have the inclination, then it's always advised that uh, you you push on with the degree and get the master's qualification at least as well. It would uh, put you in really good stead for the future. Uh, let me mention the other uh, staff that we have because um, you're only seeing me at the moment and hearing Janine's voice. So within the division of geomatics, we are six at the moment. There's uh, myself as a senior lecturer and currently the program convener, which is a responsibility that rotates among the staff. Uh, we have two associate professors, uh, Prof Julian Smith and Prof Jenny Whittle. Um, they've been uh, in the department for the longest. I think Jenny has been in the department for the longest uh, and then Julian. We also have uh, two more senior lecturers, uh, Dr. Petroba Odera, uh, who's been with us now for, I don't want to say it because I might get it wrong, something like six years, um, but maybe more, maybe, yeah. And we also have uh, Dr. Morblessing Shoko, who's recently joined us only this year. Um, and uh, we have a lecturer with us, uh, Dr. Kavir Singh. So just the six academics in the department. So as I said, it's, it's nice and small and we get to know each other very well. We get to know our students very well. We are supported by a number of uh, support staff. We've got uh, Dirk Mattia, who's uh, on the surveying side and very capably supported by Mignon Wells, who's on the geographic information system side. Uh, and then we also have uh, administrative support from Janita Abrams and Suleika Schroeder. And that pretty much covers the complement so within the division of geomatics. Janine is our departmental administrator, so she covers everything in the entire school for architecture, planning and geomatics. All right, well then I think with the, um, it looks like we're almost out of time from my side. So then for those who've been here, I'd like to say thanks very much. I hope it was informative. Uh, maybe it was that informative that I answered all your questions. You never know. Uh, but really do feel free to uh, contact us. I'm sure the contact details uh, are shared with you. If not, then you can always find us at uh, geomatics.uct.ac 
www.ghanaspeaks.za uh, and you'll find my contact details there. Uh, quite easy, I'm simon.hull at uct.ac.za. So thanks very much and I uh, look forward to receiving any questions from you by email uh, and we'll try to follow up on anything that wasn't covered today.